So last lecture, what we have seen is like, you know, a postal API. So we actually have this particular website, what it is like, you know, we collected this particular API, this particular URL we collected, right? And then we entered, you know, copy this, we entered, we entered this particular URL, copying and pasting it in <coughs> one another tab. And then here, you know, if I press the center, you know, I press the center. So after supplying, you know, after supplying this particular parameter inside this, this particular API, this particular URL, we are receiving the response into the JSON format, right? We are receiving the format, uh, we are receiving this particular into the JSON format. And we have passed this and then we have displayed it into the uh, developer console, right? In on the debug actually. But see, this is a manual process. This one actually is a manual process. So in the real time, this was just a scenario to show you like there are uh, how does actually when you hit an api how does it responds to you right there are so many different apis for that even though you know we can we can go with like you know weather map api as well go with that open weather map so this is also one of the good example to learn the integration here also you know here also when you make a i mean when you asked for the weather conditions it's going to return you in the form of json let me try to show you that as well so i mean these will be the two examples that i'll be covering with this i can do over here is like you know site has little bit modified that's why Let me go with this option. API docs. So I uh, see. I mean, if you hit this URL, see if you hit this URL, it's, it's very same like this. You know, if you hit the URL, you hit the URL. This particular, this is also one of the URL. This here also you can see that this is a URL. So if you hit the here URL, it's going to give you the format, and it's going to uh, it's going to give you the response in the JSON format, like the coordinate longitude latitude and the weather conditions and everything you know so this is just an example okay, when this particular api is going to be get hit you this website this particular application will going to give you the response like this you know and we require to parse it but see we are not going to do this manually every time i mean i am not going to you know copy this and pasting it over here and entering my Postal pin code. Rather, what we want is like you know this should be happen automatically with some some application. What we wanted over here is that you know we should have one of the system in Salesforce itself. From this Salesforce, you know, from the Salesforce, I'm going to supply this particular UPI. I'm I'm going, I'm, I'm going to supply this particular URL from the Salesforce along with some parameters. And I wanted this to be get transferred to this particular uh, uh, this particular website, Indian Postal Code. And I wanted to receive this response back to the Salesforce. This is actually the practical purpose and this is actually the practical scenario. That means you are passing the parameters from the Salesforce. You, know, you are passing the parameters from the Salesforce to this particular uh, postal pin code API and it is actually returning you the and you are receiving that parameter inside the Salesforce once again. So for that, you know, for that we are moving further. And actually, if you if you observe our journey, like how we are progressing into the integration, so we are learning it, you know. Uh, I mean, in every every lecture, we are learning something new for that, right? We all started this, uh, like we all started this. What is the concept of integration when it requires, right? What are the different forms of the integrations as well? And then, what does it means by the JSONs and everything, right? So, first of all, what we started, we manually created uh, the JSON formats and everything, and then we started it creating. Uh, I mean, we learn what is, what does it means by the serialization and deserialization process. Okay, after that, you know, after that, during the deserialization, I told you that there is a direct class for that as well. I mean, instead of going it manually writing that lengthy code, what you can do is like you know, you can take the advantage of that system dot deserialize method as well. System dot JSON dot deserialize. And this is one of the example. I mean, I, I collected this uh, similar kind of this response from any of the API. 
and then we have passed it you know we have deserialized that as well so but that was a manual process you know that was a manual process now i wanted this to be get happen automatically i mean we wanted to for example what we want is like let me try to show you that i mean what we want over here is like you know i wanted to build up a system uh, of of this particular thing you know we will be building one of the visual force page we will be building one of the visual force page for example with this name search the postal postal branches something like that so I'm, I'm going to create a visual force page for that and from this visual force page i will be entering that uh, your pin, pin code and after hitting the search button what i want i wanted all this to be get transferred i wanted this to make a request to that particular web services which is available on to third party website postal pin code and, and while transferring this you know this is going to get uh, i mean after transferring these all parameters it's going to this particular web service uh, which which is present into postal pin code api that is going to give me the response i'm going to collect it once again back to the salesforce and i'll be displaying this whole information in the form of table so that is a real time case that is what a real time case so for that you know for that whenever you wanted to request when, whenever you want to initiate the request from the salesforce to a web service or rather when you wanted to collect the response from web services to salesforce understand this whenever you wanted to initiate a request from where from the salesforce to the web service the any third party system and then whenever you wanted to collect the response whenever you wanted to collect the response from third party system to the salesforce so we certainly require to learn something called as http classes so for this particular operation abhi humne isko manually kiya and i i passed this manually i passed this whole thing manually and based on that you know based on that we have print the result we have print that result system dot debug right but this is not actual process this is just like you know i wanted you to get aware of these things i wanted you i wanted to introduce like how we can pass the json format with one of the class called as system dot deserialize system dot json dot deserialize and then we we pass this whole content you know we pass this whole content this method actually deserializes it right and because there are i mean more than one of the records so we we first of all create a class we first of all create a class of this and then you know and then we have stored it inside that particular class so this is what you i mean you know this right you know this why we have done this whole thing So I wanted you to understand that there is a direct class for deserialization. Although for serialization there is nothing. For serialization, you actually require to do it, you know, by process. But here, like you can skip the lengthy coding and then you can definitely deserialize the JSON content. So that was just an example. But then in the in the actual in the real time case in the real time case we never do it manually. I mean we don't know we we never go it like this. Yeah, I am going to copy this. I'll be pasting this. Collecting. No, we don't do that. other we always built a system like this in the salesforce we have one of the application the salesforce we have a certain scenario where for example i'll be passing you know for some example i'll i'll, I'll be passing that uh, pin code and uh, this, this 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 should be get you know this should be get to web services and i should rather collect the response from the web service so whenever this is your uh, kind of application if you are designing and you wanted to initiate the request and you wanted to collect the response from the web services right then we actually require to learn something called as http classes so that type of programming you know that type of programming we are going to learn it with something called as http http classes so there are actually in the http there are two basic things about sending and about collecting about sending the request and about collecting the response because see this is the whole thing this is ultimately is the whole thing why we are doing this we wanted to request something to the web service and we wanted to collect the response from that web service so http class you know majorly in the http class majorly in the http class there are two different types of methods to send the request and to and to you know and and whenever uh, and whenever the web service returns something how to collect that particular response send and to collect i mean there are the things we are going to learn over here is like what you know it would be http request and then http response http request and http response so in the http in the http classes you know there are actually two different major things first is http request class the second would be you know http response class so http request class ka jo use hai na that is to make the request that is to make the request to the external web service and http response class is like you know it is used to collect whatever the response we have generated the whatever the response has been generated so 
collect that response back into the Salesforce. We are going to make the use of HTTP response class. So let's go with this a little bit, go with the query. And then, you know, majorly we will be understanding this concept from the practical level. I'll, I'll, I'll be writing the programs, I'll be creating the web services, like how we can create the web service and how we can call it, how we can execute that everything you are going to learn right today. Okay, see, this HTTP request class, this HTTP request class will help you out, you know, will help you out to initiate your request. HTTP request class will help you out to initiate your request to the web service. Okay, this is something called as call out. This is something called as call out. And when you are receiving the response from the external website, external third party system, uh, Salesforce, this is something called as call in. This, this, this concept is just about how we make a call, how we receive a call onto our mobile phone. Whenever you are trying to make a call to somebody else, for example, you're calling, you're trying to call your friend, right? And you're dialing his number from a mobile phone. That time we, we make this, this is an outgoing call. If someone else is calling you and you are receiving that call, this, this, this we used to call it, we are receiving a call. So that making a call, that initiating the request is called as call out. And then, then receiving the response from the web services and, and then taking it back to the sales for this is called as call in, right? So uh, we will be understanding, we will be learning both of the process, call out as well as call in. Let's understand that. So whenever we wanted to make a request, you know, whenever we wanted to send a few parameters from the Salesforce application, like in this case, what I wanted to send, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be sending the pin code, right? I'll be sending the pin code as a parameter along with the, that, along with the, uh, the URLs and everything. Because see, when you are sending, when you are sending the request, when you are sending the request, that request might consist of so many different parameters. Like what is the method? What is the method? I'll be telling you what does it means by get, post, put batch and everything delete okay what is the url this is something called as endpoint url and then what are the parameters so in general whenever we pass you know in general whenever we hit any api when we try to hit any api that api have few different parameters that if we are requesting for example if i'm requesting if i'm requesting this particular web service please send me please send me the details of this pin code 440024 Okay. So along with this request, along with this parameter, I certainly require to pass few more things. You know, obviously to make this request to be get completed, you know, to make this request to be get completed, I certainly require to pass parameters, you know, in, in a proper format. What is that format? That format looks like to be this. That format looks like to be this, like this. This is one of the format. This is one of the format, right? So there are certain things in a, in a request. A request consists of certain things. How to pass on that, that we are going to learn. So your request class, HTTP request class, certainly have few more methods, like set method. What is the method that you are using? Methods could be like get, method could be put, method could be post and delete. You will be learning all of that, so don't worry about that. What is the use of get method? Get method is used to retrieve the data, get the data from external web service. I wanted to receive, for example, I'm, I'm giving the web service for it. So to the web service, I'm giving that postal uh, pin code to, to give that, you know, after, after giving that, uh, this is returning me the whole details of that pin. So to get that data, to get that data, there is a method called as get. To post something, to post something, to insert data using the web services. For example, if you wanted to insert a few of the parameters which you have been received and you wanted to insert them in any of the object of the sale for that time, that time you will be using the post. So get is to receive the data. Post is to perform the insert operation actually. Get is used to receive the data. Get, try to understand the difference. Get actually used to just receive the data. And later on you can represent that data. You know, you can represent that onto a user interface. Post method precisely is used to whenever whatever we received, you know, let's store that inside the Salesforce. I mean to perform the insert operation. That is what the post method will be. And you will don't worry because I'm going to take the examples on every one of them, right? So you will be understanding how how get actually works, how post actually works. Put is for the update operation. Put is for the update operation. Okay. If I wanted to update certain records inside the Salesforce from third party website, some external website, then we will be using that put operation. And delete obviously is to delete, you know, if you, if there's a data inside the Salesforce and you wanted it to be get deleted from the external web services, then we are going to use 
delete uh, kind of method. So there are different different methods. There are different different methods. It all depends on what are the operation that we are initiating. And because I'll be covering every one of them, so you please don't worry about that, right? You please, every one of you, don't worry about that. I'll be taking example on every every of the method. So it's going to be get covered. So you are certainly don't require to worry. Okay, how does this actually going to work, right? Okay. So your HTTP request class have certain different methods. First of all, we require to define what is the method. If I'm, for example, you know, if for example, if I'm initiating this request, if I'm initiating this request, what is the method type? If this method type is get. See, here itself in the URL, here itself in the URL, it has been mentioned that when you are initiating this URL, you know, if when you are initiating this URL, you are hitting this API, the method type should not be post, it should not be patch, it should not be delete, it should not be put, rather it should be get method. So, my, when I'm trying to pass the parameter, so how to define that method? That is what this, this method is going to be get used, set method. And then the second is define the URL. Like this is something, you know, this is what, this is the URL. Okay, this is your URL. To define the URL, there's a method called a send, set endpoint. Set endpoint. Endpoint actually means a URL. You know, endpoint actually means a URL. And then set body. I mean, uh, what is the request? Request body. Where these are some of the things uh, client certificate name is sometimes it requires uh, mostly it, do, it don't require to pass certification timeout you can decide for example see this is an external operation if you are requesting something from the salesforce to this third party system and you want it key within one uh, for example one second is 1000 milliseconds you wanted this key within 10 minutes right within 10 minutes that means 10000 milliseconds or rather 10 seconds, one second is uh, 1000 millisecond. Okay, 10 seconds. Within 10 seconds, you wanted this to be a third party, a third party website should respond. Otherwise, you have a timeout, karte ki, page ko refresh, uh, page ko log out. Karte ki. This generally happens with the banking. You know, if you go with the banking transaction, so that transition have a limit. Yeah, uh, your your transition should be get completed up to this particular duration of time. So if you if you wanted that functionality, then we actually set you know set timeout. We will give key how much after this the transition is going to be get failed. Okay. Uske baad kuch cheese se headers or compressed. We don't require this usually. These two things generally we don't use. Okay. This means jo jo cheese use hoti hai, aapko baka ka chale jaata. There are so many methods apart from this. There are again so many methods, but mostly these are some of the common methods. Set the method, set the endpoint URL, set the body, and set the time order and everything you require. Okay. Then few of the methods like you know set header and the client certificate and the compressed these are rarely used it all depends on the applications these are some of the methods okay so how you are going to uh, use this http request you know if you wanted to use any method now this is very common see this is something which is not new actually for us see uh, what we are learning is the http a request okay, what we are learning http request it's a class now this class have all these methods there's a method called as set method set endpoint url set body you know set client header these are the method these are the members of this class which class http request class now if you wanted to access any member usually not just i mean just forget about this just tell me whenever we wanted to access any member of the class any member it could be a variable it could be a method inside that class if I wanted to uh, access any member of the class, what is the way? We first of all require to create an object, right? Of this class, we require to create an object. Now, with the name of that object, I can access this member, I can access this member, I can access this member. So, whenever we wanted to access any member of the class, it could be a method, it could be your uh, a variable inside that class, okay? We certainly require to define an object, one local variable, one instance of that class. And with the help of that object only, I am going to access this. So this, con this concept is a general concept of programming. Right? You know this because we have completed almost everything. So I uh, I wanted to access the method, any of the method if I wanted to access of the HTTP request class. What first thing I required? I first of all required to create a method. And that is what we have done over here. With this statement, you can understand. HTTP request is the name of class. HTTP request, now make a variable name, a local variable, whatever you want it. An object and instance post request and then new along new along with new keyword along with this with a default constructor that's going to make this as a that's going to make this as an object object of this class 
Now with the name of this, with the name of this, you can call any method like postal request dot send endpoint, postal request dot set method meta to be at get and uh, endpoint to be like this, right? Postal request dot set timeout ten thousand ten thousand I am given because uh, it's like I'm a little bit confused about this. Okay, one second me kitne milliseconds hote hain, ten or hundred or one or whatever. So uh, this is what you know. After this particular, but this time is actually the millisecond. So like, would be, I think it is one thousand for one second. I think so. That means ten thousand for ten seconds probably. And you can go and Google this. One thousand, right? Joshna has uh, so uh, giving ten thousand means you know we wanted that after ten second. Uh, the timer should be get out or aapko fir refresh karna pad sakta hai. So, I mean, I just, this is just an example. This one is just an example. To to make you aware that if you wanted to make a use of any of this method, because all these methods, you know, all these methods belongs to a class. Which class? HTTP request. So, we first of all require to create one of the method of this class, right? Okay. This was a brief introduction about the request. Uh, mostly, we are going to cover it in the examples, right? Now let me briefly introduce one more thing, and that is response. After initiating the request, when you initiate the request, right, and you supply whatever is required, or you supply all of the parameters that web services actually demand. If you wanted me to respond back, I first of all required all these parameters. I mean, point number one, point number two, point number three, all should be there inside your request. If your request is not handling, your request is not coming up with all of the sufficient data what I require. The web services will deny your request. It will say, you know, I am not going to respond onto this thing. I certainly require uh, the request what you are initiating to me as a format, is a fixed format for that. And that is what, you know, see integration, always remember, integration is not a single method. Integration always require two persons, one from the Salesforce side, another from to whom you are integrating. For example, if you are integrating it from a postal, you certainly require to, you know, some of the parameters from this API as well. Integration always is like two man show. It's not single man show. We certainly require two parties to be get involved in this: the client, the one who is actually initiating the request, and the one who is actually giving the response. So integration is always it's always a two man's job. It's a teamwork basically. Okay. Anyways, so when you have initiated the response, when you have initiated the request automatically, you have initiated the request automatically. With HTTP request class, this web service is expected to give you response back based on your request. Now, how to handle that? How to handle the responses that is being generated from the external website? For that, we have another class called as HTTP response class. HTTP response. Your HTTP response class have all these methods: get the body, get the status, get the status code, get the XML stream, Twitter, whatever, and few more methods as well, right? We are going to see that into the programming, right? We are going to see that into the programming, like how many methods are there with the HTTP response, how many methods are there with the HTTP request, that everything, right? Now, how you are going to access this? The same. Yeah. So, how you are going to access the same? Same. Again, okay. what you first of all require to do is like you know, first thing, we first of all required to define a variable uh, object of HTTP class because that's the base class. HTTP, try to understand the relationship. HTTP is the parent class. Now this HTTP class majorly have two child classes. We have learned something called as inheritance. When we have started this Apex programming in the initial days of the programming, I told you the principles of Apex uh, object oriented, right? And what we know is like, you know, Apex is also one of the object oriented language. And like any other object oriented, Apex also supports all of the principles of your object oriented programming. Inheritance is one of them. So in the HTTP, HTTP is the base class. It's a mother class. It's a father class. It's a parent class. This class internally have two child classes. One of them is HTTP request, HTTP request. And the second one is HTTP response. Second one is HTTP response. These are also classes. I, I cannot say these are the methods. No, these are classes. Inside them, there are a few of the methods. 
Inside them, there are few of the methods. Inside them, there are few of the methods. But yet, but yet, try to understand the relationship over here. Your HTTP, your HTTP is the parent class. Now, for this parent, there are two child classes as well. HTTP request and HTTP response. So, how we are going to program, how we are going to code everything, try to understand this first of all. I, you know, in my program, in all of the, in the web service that I'll be creating, the web service that I'll be creating, I will, you know, first of all, create an object of that parent class. What is the parent class? HTTP class. Your HTTP is the parent class. So, I'll be creating one object, the new HTTP, and you know this. So, I created an object. I create an object of the parent class. This this would be like, you know, my first thing. This would be like, you know, my first thing. And then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll create one of the object, a similar kind of object for initiating the request. That is done with the HTTP request class. Second thing, after creating the parent object, you will be creating the object of request. The same way you did it over here, or the same way, same way you did it over here. HTTP request. Again, create, uh, create, uh, let me make it like this. Yeah. So the first thing, second is like you know, actually try to understand the hierarchy. We always, I mean, we also require to follow the same sequence in the programming, right? And that's why, that's why I'm trying to cover it from here as a part of theory. And then we will, we are going to see the same thing in the practical as well, right? Okay. So. After creating this parent class object, you require to create the object of your child classes. There are two child classes, request, HTTP request, and then HTTP response, right? Okay, so I'm creating this object for HTTP request. After that, after that, I can initiate, like, I can send the parameters. If I'm requesting, you know, if I'm requesting certain things, I certainly require to pass few parameters, right? I can send the endpoint URLs, the methods, timer, whatever, whatever I, re I require to send. Okay. After that, after that, the request has been initiated. We are expecting response. Once you submitted everything to the web service, you know, once you request, once you submitted everything in the form of request, you submitted everything to the web service. Now, what we are expecting, we are expecting the response from the web service. So, how to collect that response? You know, how to collect that response? So, we would require to go with the HTTP response class, create an uh, create a object for that as well, right? an object like it here it was like postal request postal response these are some of the naming conventions for the request class we generally name it as a for example account request for example contact request postal request and for the response class we generally name it like an account response contact response opportunity response like this okay so here you know here i will be using here i will be using that postal http dot send okay postal http postal http dot send now send is a method of this actually okay send is a method of this http class what you wanted to send i wanted to send the request postal http i mean this dot send send is again send is again an object of this right send is again a method of this i told you i told you your http class understand this let's invest the time over here so that we understand the http class is a class this is a class it have two child classes http request and http response now http request also have some of the method your request and response these are have some even http also have some of the methods inside that all because everyone is a class class do have the members class do have the members take okay? classes mein members hote hain. that's a very common thing your request your request have all these methods http request have all these methods Okay, your response have all these methods, but what about HTTP? That is also one of the class, and that's a parent class. So this HTTP do have some methods inside that. Send is one of them. Send is one of them. Okay, send is one of them. So even in that, you know, a method is just a name is send. Chalo, bar bar ek hi chiz aayegi. If I wanted to use this method. This method belongs to HTTP class. How can I use? I require to create an object of this. कोई भी मेथड को कोई भी मेथड किसी भी क्लास की कोई भी मेथड यू नो इफ यू वांटेड टू यूज दैट मेथड इफ यू वांटेड टू यूज दिस मेथड व्हाट यू रिक्वायर टू डिफाइन यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिक्वायर टू क्रिएट एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ दिस क्लास इफ दिस इज द ऑब्जेक्ट आई क्रिएटेड नाउ विद दिस ऑब्जेक्ट आई कैन एक्सेस सेंड आई कैन एक्सेस एनी मेंबर ऑफ दिस क्लास 
एंड दिस इज है विद दिस ऑल्सो यहाँ रिक्वेस्ट के लिए भी आपको एक ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट करना पड़ेगा उसके साथ आप सारे मेंबर्स एक्सेस कर सकते रिस्पॉन्स के लिए भी आपको एक ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट करना पड़ेगा उसके लिए तो ये एक बेसिक प्रिंसिपल है ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड का इसमें कोई नई बात नहीं है एंड दिस इज वी हैव डन इट फॉर एवरी टाइम इवन फॉर द बैच एग्जीक्यूशन बैच क्लासेस जो आपने बनाई थी फॉर द एग्जीक्यूटिंग एवर बैच डेटा बेस डॉट एग्जीक्यूट मैथड होती थी बट फॉर इवन फॉर डेटा पेट डेटा बेस डॉट एग्जीक्यूट जो मैथड है आपके एग्जीक्यूट मैथड या एग्जीक्यूट बैच मैथड वॉट एवर उसके लिए भी आपको बैच प्रोग्राम जो आपने बैच क्लास बनाया उसका ऑब्जेक्ट देना पड़ता था राइट सो दिस इज द कॉमन कंसेप्ट एवरी टाइम वी नीड टू लर्न द सेम थिंग राइट ओके सो वॉट आई विल बी डूंग इज लाइक यू नो द फर्स्ट थिंग मैंने एक एस टी टीपी क्लास का एक वेरिएबल बनाया एक लोकल वेरिएबल बनाया एक ऑब्जेक्ट बनाया ठीक है अब मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ रिस्पॉन्स जब मैं लिख रहा हूँ एस टी टीपी रिस्पॉन्स तो फिर आई एम कॉलिंग दिस आई एम कॉलिंग दिस ये पोस्टल एस टी टीपी डॉट सेंड सेंड करो सेंड क्या करना है रिक्वेस्ट जो रिक्वेस्ट सेंड होगी वन दिस रिक्वेस्ट विल गोइंग टू बी गेट सेंड अब ये रिस्पॉन्स जनरेट करेगा दैट आई एम कलेक्टिंग इन साइड वन ऑफ द वेरिएबल वन ऑफ द वेरिएबल ऑफ द डेटा टाइप एस टी टी पी रिस्पॉन्स तो अब जो जो कुछ भी वेबसाइट भेज देगा वो एक्सटर्नल वेबसाइट जो कुछ भी भेजेगा दैट आई हैव कलेक्टेड दिस इन साइड वन ऑफ द वेरिएबल वन ऑफ द वेरिएबल ऑफ होम एस टी टी पी रिस्पॉन्स ठीक है एंड देन यू कैन यू नो विद फंक्शन गेट बॉडी गेट स्टेटस यू कैन एक्सप्लोर यू कैन एक्सप्लोर that particular response which we have received you know we can explore like in you know, a postal response dot get body so wo sab usko hum baad mein explore kar sakte so this is how you know this is how we are going to perform the real time integration so we are going to perform the real time real time integration mein do hi cheez hai ek to main jo abhi start kar diya ye aur dusra hai o auth authentication open authentication These are the two important things. ये दो ही चीजें हैं इंटीग्रेशन इंटीग्रेशन एक्चुअली काफी छोटा है और बहुत यूजफुल है प्रॉब्लम ये कि इंटीग्रेशन तक पहुंचने के लिए काफी वक्त लग जाता है यू रिक्वायर टू लर्न सर्टन डिफरेंट न्यू थिंग्स इसी वजह से लोग सोचते हैं कि इंटीग्रेशन थोड़ा बड़ा है या टफ है एक्चुअली इंटीग्रेशन बहुत ईजी है इंटीग्रेशन में देखा जाए तो दो ही चीजें एक तो वो जब अब हम जो स्टार्ट करने जा रहे हैं वो और दूसरा है आपका ओ ऑथ ऑथेंटिकेशन जो मैं इसके बाद देने वाला हूँ उसके बाद यह खत्म हो जाएगा इंटीग्रेशन विल बी ओवर डिप्लॉयमेंट पड़ेंगे डिप्लॉयमेंट इज हार्डली टू डेज टू थ्री डेज एंड सिलेबस इज कवर ठीक है आई डोंट नो वाई द पीपल आर नॉट ज्वाइनिंग दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट ओनली फ्यू पीपल ऑफ क्लास इज बी ज्वाइनिंग फॉर द रीजन इज विथ यू गाइज आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड एनी मिस आई प्रॉबेबली कैन होप कि दीज गाइज हु आर नॉट ज्वाइनिंग दे आर रेफरिंग इट फ्रॉम द वीडियोज लाइक है ना काफी सारे लोग हैं नहीं ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं एनी वेज दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वॉट वी आर लर्निंग इंटीग्रेशन दे विल आस्क यू दिस हैव यू वर्क ऑन द इंटीग्रेशन Certainly, you require to say yes, and they will ask you the questions on that as well. Yes, yeah, this is something which is very important. What we are learning still, anyways. Chalo. So, what are the steps whenever we, you know, wanted to invoke any third-party web services? What are the steps? The steps are given. First of all, get the details of the web services. I told you that integration is not a single man job. You certainly require to collect the informations, you know, of the. I mean, if you are initiating, if you are hitting any URL, if you are hitting any web service, we should know that should be a known web service. You know, so we should have we should uh, collect some of the parameters of that uh, web services as well, and where we require to store it inside the Salesforce. Okay, we first of all require to establish a connection, and then then and then only you know we can uh, hit the hit that API otherwise not. So what are the steps? First of all, get the details of the web services which you wanted to be get invoked from your Salesforce environment. For that, what are things we require? We require the endpoint URL. We require the method name. We require Uh, the input parameters and then we require the authorization codes these are what we requires so here if you see although this doesn't have any authorization code but i mean let me compare with this with this what is the endpoint url so this is my endpoint url if i wanted to hit this api this is the endpoint url right i wanted to collect this okay second thing uh, the method name method name is what it mentioned the method name is get okay and the second name required input parameters it requires this input parameter okay that we are going to supply it dynamically and any authorization code if is there for this there is no authorization although for when we are you know when we are making a call to the api it certainly requires you know api formats api is a must so at this time you know when i'll be hitting this you know it's actually require something called as api api key my api key 
you can you first of all require to I, i'll be telling you don't worry i'll be telling you see that time this requires a code so there are few of the apis that don't require this and you know that doesn't requires any authorization code few of them requires so agar aap weather map ki baat karo to it certainly requires before sending the response it uh, certainly require this key ki yahan pe kya hota hai ki you know what really happens when you make any when you initiate any request when you initiate any request for example if you are initiating if you are using this input parameter right so it requires api key it requires you to supply the api key so that is something called as authorization code so in in case of postal pin code api there is no concept of authorization code so but we just required to supply the pin code that's a required parameter required input parameter okay and then we required to uh, we required to end i mean after you are having this every information you know after you are having this every information okay you are having this every information for example let me copy this let me copy this uh, end point url yes i do have that and point your all i do have that i'm having this method name method name is get okay required input parameter yes it requires the input parameters pin code okay authorization code when not okay this is just an example okay this is just an example once you collect every information you know once you have all this information with you now from where this information this information are always being supplied from the third party ठीक है, these informations are always supplied from the third party. So, I'm repeatedly telling you this. I'm repeatedly telling you this that integration is not one man job. If you are from the Salesforce side, we certainly require somebody from this particular website, and who is going to deliver us all these input parameters? Okay. So, whenever we do the integration, integration is a two man job. We require somebody from third party website as well. So, uh, in this case, everything has been, you know, everything has been, uh, I mean, formatted onto this website. So, आपको यहाँ किसी को call थोड़ी ना करना. You just require to understand this. यहाँ पर सारी चीजें available हैं. You just require to decode them. This is yeah, this is the endpoint URL. This is the method name. This is the required parameter. It doesn't have any, I mean, API keys. It doesn't have any authorization code. So, you require to decode this. ठीक है? ऐसा है. Anyways. now after you have you collected all these informations now you require to add the endpoint url inside the salesforce in the remote site setting and this we already have done so you already have learned in in our admin days the security you know user management that was the topic and probably aap log bhool gaye us cheez ko koi baat nahi hum kar lete usko so i require to add this endpoint url and i require to add this endpoint url into inside the salesforce otherwise अगर नहीं करोगे तो यू वॉन्ट बी एबल यू नो यू वॉन्ट बी एबल टू कॉल दैट एपी आई यू वॉन्ट बी एबल टू हिट दैट वेब सर्विस फ्रॉम द सेल्स फोर्स दैट इज द रीजन यू नो दैट्स द रीजन वी रिक्वायर टू डू दिस दैट्स द रीजन वी रिक्वायर टू डू दिस राइट ओके सो आई आई बी नो आई एम गोइंग विद दिस फॉर द सिस्टम एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर सिक्योरिटी कंट्रोल्स एंड देन यू नो एंड एवरीथिंग व्हाट एवर द मेंशन ओवर हियर लेट्स डू दैट सो लेट्स गो टू द सेल्स फोर्स द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर security controls and in the security controls setting all is remote site setting remote site setting this one okay remote site settings so here actually you know here actually you required to add that url here actually you required to add that url see even if you remember i added this at the time of when i mean when we were doing that into the same thing i have told you during our admin days that time i have demonstrated and that's the reason you can see the open accurate weather map i have added this that time right and let me make this once again remote site setting you can give any name like you know i can give like you know postal pin code api and here i would like to paste that url url maine pehle se nikal ke rakh liya that is what the url and you wanted to give any description even so you can give that as well okay here spaces are not allowed so i can do what you know i can 
and I can do it like this. Okay. Spaces in the name are not allowed, so you rather require make it. I mean, you can compress it or you can insert the underscores as well. So it's like you know the I have added this URL. I added this URL into the remote site setting. Okay, this means that with this particular URL, I wanted to exchange some information. So without adding this into the remote site setting, we are not. Salesforce is highly secured. You, you, whenever you do the integration, you certainly require to take some steps. So this is always the step number one. You know, this is always the step number one. You require to add the endpoint URL. You require to add the endpoint URL into your remote site setting. Okay, this is the step number one for any integration. For any integration, whether you are consuming, whether you are you know initiating whatever, this is the first thing. This is the first thing you always require to add the endpoint URL into your remote site setting inside the Salesforce. Like without this, we cannot initiate the web services. Understand this. So this is my step number one or two, whatever. Step number one is to get the data. Step number two would be like you know add the URL inside the Salesforce remote site setting, and then let's connect with the third-party system web services by using uh, these all classes. So this obviously I require to generate the classes. You know I obviously require to create the classes. That that I'll be going. Do in the tomorrow's lecture, and this is the step number three. You know, I'll I, I'm going to write the web services. I'm going to write down the classes, whatever is required, Visual Force page, controller classes, everything. I'll I'll be creating with all these methods, and then I'll be hitting that. You know, I'll be hitting that. I'll be parsing that content, and I'm going to display that onto wherever you want it. Like right? so these are step number three and four. Right. So by tomorrow we'll be starting with this use case. We will be uh, we will be creating one of the Visual Force page, similar kind of page for this, like this, where I will be asking the user to enter the pin code. One control, one search button would be like there, and when when somebody enters the pin code over here and search, so all these parameters would be like uh, they are they are going to get transferred to the web service class, and where the response is going to be get generated, we are going to display that on to. So these are the things what we are going to cover. So tomorrow lecture is important. Actually, whole I mean, those local J partners are important. So, tell the timing. I will tell you. On to the group, I inform you. Or if even I feel better in the evening, you know, I can even take a class in the evening as well, right? So please be prepared with that also. Oh, Sakta, if everything goes fine with me, you know. If I feel better in the evening, you know, I can even take a class in the evening as well because Kalka Vesi bhi miss ho gaya hai. Probably I could announce a class with our regular time, 5:30 p.m. in the evening today as well. So please have a discussion in your group. Ki aaj shayad saam ko fir se class ho sakti hai. Right? Chaliye. Let's see that. So we'll be starting this. Abhi aata concept padaya maine. Abhi aata bacha hua aata. I'm going to start with the next lecture.